here. I think you guys owe me an apology for making me cry. Like I, I think there should have been like a disclaimer at the beginning, like you will cry at the, you will cry by the end of this. So like, I, I felt like you should have put that at the beginning, but other than that, just want to say thank you guys so much for delivering like a masterpiece. So Zach, my first question for you, man, was, can you just talk about the inspiration for this and when the idea came along to, to kind of put this together? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for that, by the way. Um, yeah, I started thinking about this idea uh, kind of on the, the heels of my, my last short film. Um, I was in my early 30s. I had just kind of crossed that threshold into my 30s, and I was starting to feel some of the, the aches and pains that go along with it. And, uh, and it just kind of hit me. It was this realization that like, oh, right, I'm, I'm getting older. I forgot about that. Um, and, uh, but I would talk to my mom about it and, and she was talking about these things that she was going to do, the traveling and all the stuff that she's going to do when she grows up. Um, and it, and it made me realize that my perspective was totally backwards from hers. And she was young by definition, her definition, and I was old by my definition. And, uh, this idea that, that youth is, is a state of mind. Um, and that if I spend all of my time focused on the past, I'm going to miss the present became this like, yeah, that feels like, that feels like something I, I want to talk about. Um, and so the idea of doing a fountain of youth story kind of emerged from that. And then trying to find characters to, to embody that I found inspiration from my two sets of grandparents who, uh, kind of had different views on aging. One of them kind of kept going and kept traveling and, you know, bought an RV and drove across the entire United States. And the other ones were, were amazing. And I loved them so much, but they were more homebody and they were more sedentary and, it felt like a really cool dynamic to try to represent within within one couple. Absolutely, and my first question for you, Keone and Mari, was just what was the, the collaborative process like when you were when you guys were trying to find the right music for the score while also trying to find the beats to tell the story. What was that whole process like? Oh man, well, um, it really started from that first meeting where Zach and Brad um, obviously pitched us the story, but also was very keen on what's your guys' creative process. Mm -hmm. This is Disney's creative process, what's your guys's? And um, they really bent that to, to uh, accommodate our own, which uh, we requested that we get music very early on so that we could be as specific as possible to the sounds, to the feeling, to the emotion. Um, and they really went above and beyond Pinar, obviously delivering the amazing music and, um, and then Zach going even further with delivering previs, um, and cube viz, um, which was just little cute versions of the characters and to see the, the blocking of some things, um, but also still allowing a lot of creative freedom in scenes, um, you know, and, and Zach explaining, well, you know, art is sitting in a chair and he's feeling this way, but you know, the movement is up to you guys. Um, and so once we got into the studio and had all the information, it was just going back to what we do, um, which is tell stories through dance and us pinpointing the uh, exact movement arc of things, uh, uh, motifs um, and those story elements that would that would resonate with people. Because if we we're just making a bunch of moves, you know, not many people are gonna resonate with that. But if there's a reason why to, if there's an, a, an arc to it and some payoffs, I think it'll, that kickball change will, will mean something a little bit more later on. And definitely, I, I I was grieved because like I'm not the best dancer, but as y'all were going, I was like, oh, I'm feeling this. And then like when those slower beats, like when you like when they were really like trying to hit those emotional parts, I was like, wait, I'm about to cry here. Like, why? I'm like, <laughs> is, it, is it like they're really telling the message through like the body movement? So I thought that was amazing. And so I wanted to piggyback off that. And I know you guys recently had a kid as well. So what was that like coming back, circling like after the, doing all that? Now rewatching it. Now you have you know, like you're kind of moving on to the like your next stages in life. So what was that kind of like? Just the whole experience. I mean, when we came in for the first meeting, I got the first email. I was five months pregnant. Oh, wow. Then they had to schedule our reference shoot around <laughs> giving birth and having time to recover enough to be able to dance. Um, so, I mean, I'm so thankful that they didn't just find other people <laughs> to, to make the moves. Um, but, you know, it's really special because our, our daughter was there just as a newborn baby, like strapped to us um, asleep, sometimes awake while we were about choreographing stuff she's heard the music already from like in my belly to new <laughs> and now uh and, like, we were talking about this earlier keone we were practicing yesterday to remember the choreography and she heard the music and she like ran over to his phone oh wow 
where is it? Like, I know what this is. Um, so she already has a connection to it, which is incredible. And I, um, you know, I can't wait to share that with her when she's older. Whether she cares or not, I don't know. But I think it's a, a really cool thing. Absolutely. And Zach, I, one thing I did want to talk about, especially with the, the choreography and the dancing and the moves, like some of the scenes, like I just felt like those transitions were just mm, chef kiss, like amazing. So can you just talk about like just the, the transitions? Because I felt like although like they were jumping from frame to frame, like they were always in focus, they were always in the middle, just always, like just taking your full, full focus. So can you just talk about that? Yeah, the the montage in the middle was kind of a it was something that was in my head from the very first version. Um, you know, it, it iterated in different ways throughout as we changed the story, but um, as this, it's funny, the, the storyboards for it were just kind of random because I was like, ah, section Q&A Mari are going to do something really cool, and then we're just going to do cool stuff around it. Um, and that's kind of what happened is, you know, the storyboards were pretty loose and, and non-specific, um, but, uh, but I knew, you know, I wanted a couple specific things in there, like it'd be great if, there, if you could have a scooter thing in there and we'll just make it work um and and these guys came up with this amazing dance and then it was really just on us to try to hide those transitions as much as possible and to make sure that that all of those those cuts you feel them rather than notice them and it just feels like this mm. this this flurry of, a, of an evening so that it really felt like a lot of time had passed when i think in actuality it's like 20 seconds right it's a very, it's a very quick scene but it feels like you enjoyed an entire evening with them because every choice in the film had to be really specific. So we only had six minutes to do it in. And so you needed to make it feel like a much bigger story in a much smaller amount of time, which makes every choice so much more important. That's what I'm saying. Like by the end, but I was like, hold on, like, can we get a full movie of this? Can I just, can I get a whole musical about this? It just, it, it felt like you, you just killed it across the board. So another thing I also did want to ask was just particularly with just not only the, the transitions, but just like overall, what was it like when you, when you yourself finally saw the, the final piece, like when you locked it in, you just got to like play it for the first time after everything was done. What was that moment like? You know, for, for me, and I'll let these guys speak to their experience. You know, I watched, I've watched this thing seven million times in seven million iterations from storyboards to previs and reference video and rough animation and, and animation and lighting and effects and so you do start to go you start to lose what the entirety is to some degree and, and you're so focused on the details and that raindrop is is affecting me and i don't like that raindrop or that hair is is bothering me and so you start you get so deep in the weeds that you start to forget how amazing it is. And so, you know, when we got to, to watch it as a studio, you know, they, they shared it with the whole studio and we had a little like rap party, uh, virtual rap party and, you know, got to watch it at home on my TV. And I was like, holy crap, this is good. <laughs> you know, like, because you, you just, you lose sight of it and you're so focused on these details and you're just kind of going on faith that it's going to work. And so getting that distance and getting to watch it again, it was like, wow, we, we really pulled off something here, you know, and that's, that's, that's awesome to get to have that distance. Absolutely. I'm getting the wrap up sign. So I do want to ask you, Keone and, and Mari, the same question, like just that the final lock, like I know you guys were doing a, a lot of the dancing and stuff, but when you saw the final version, what was that moment like for you guys? Well, um, I think it wasn't, we had a long period where we didn't see what they were doing. And then we mm. got to I think they filmed us reacting the first time we saw it with like animation. They, I think there was still some rain stuff that had to be judged a bit and there was lighting that still had to be put on, but it was much more fleshed out than their cube, the cube is. And uh, I think pretty sure we were crying like the entire time, not at the end, like the <laughs> whole time, just in disbelief and, and still, still cry. I still cry every time I watch it. Listen, I, I was gonna I was gonna try to rewatch it before I interview you guys, and I just couldn't because you would have you would be seeing tears on my face like while I was trying to interview. So I said, not a good idea. But what about you, Keone? Oh, same, man. I think just um, it's hard to sometimes uh, remove uh, the experience. Um, uh, you know, just seeing the Disney logo in the beginning, in the end, and what that means means for us to be a part of that legacy um and then that's just separate from like the the actual product itself and i think if i wasn't a part of that process i'd be like dang it disney you got me again you know <laughs> and just in the way that they do in all the films and so it's 
quite an emotional experience for us to still watch. But uh, you know, I'm glad that other people feel the same way. Absolutely. Well, I'm getting the wrap up song. So I want to say thank you for giving me some of your time, guys. Absolutely loved it. I'm going to rewatch it now that I'm done interviewing. The camera can turn off so I can cry in peace and solitude. But <laughs> thank you guys so much. And I can't wait for people to see it when it drops on Disney Plus, man. Thanks, Darren. Really appreciate it.